All right, all right, I'll be the first to admit it. I really didn't think this bad boy was going to be a smash hit. And boy, oh boy, how wrong I really was because Dante is an absolute menace right now. Now, without exaggerating, I believe Dante will go down as one of the best and strongest Warframe releases. He's definitely right up there without the need for much tuning or buffing required. So guys, if you're a player who enjoys a mage caster gameplay, or if you enjoy a run and gun style type of gameplay, then stick around. Let me go and break down everything you need to know about Dante. First things first, let's go and have a breakdown of his abilities. Passive. Noctua, which is Dante's magic book, will scan targets marking them down for your collection log like a true librarian. Now, this is similar to the scanners that you can buy from the market or even the likes of the Helios Sentinel, which can also scan for you. So this is a utility feature. However, once you have completed the log of that specific enemy, then you will gain a 50% status chance increase whenever attacking that particular completed enemy type. This synergizes well with the Paragrims in his kit, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Overall, it's a good passive in my opinion. Dante's first ability is Noctua. This is his exalted weapon. Dante summons out Noctua and shoots out a projectile missile, dealing slash damage with a good amount of base critical and status chance to match it. Now, if there are targets behind the enemy that you're shooting at, the projectile will fragment, splitting and hitting up to four other targets within a 60 degree cone behind that enemy, and they will seek up to 20 meters away. This quality of life gives the weapon more breathing room to help with your ad clearing. Each shot also builds up and charges a bar in which you can unleash a bigger, widespread spell shot, dealing big radiation damage to those standing in the way. This book is absolutely no joke. The damage that it does is staggering, handling steel path enemies and enemies enemies over level 250, for example, like a hot knife through butter. So this ability is great if you're looking to go and use them for a run and gun build, but we'll cover that a little bit later in the video. Dante's fourth ability is Final Verse. So we are jumping ahead a little bit here in terms of ability order first to fourth, but I'm doing this in hopes to help you guys understand it better. We're going to work backwards from here and give you better insight when explaining the next two abilities after this one. So to simplify that, his fourth ability is basically a suffix type ability that can only be activated after a combination has been composed and ended into his little book icon that you see here in the bottom right. For those of you guys who understand, this is similar to Grendel eating an enemy and then being able to unlock access to his other abilities. Or like Nidus gaining stacks with his first ability before he could then go and use his third and fourth. Well, Dante is similar to those types of frames. You see, the final first fourth ability is only activated after a certain combination is punched in between the second and third abilities. So when those are punched in, final first will either enhance those abilities or basically create new abilities with the new combination mixture. So let's go ahead and continue and give you a better example. Dante's second ability is a light verse. Like a composition, Dante enters one light verse into his scripture. During this cast, Dante and allies will gain some overguard protection whilst also providing healing to those injured. Now, if Dante casts light verse a second time, the book will go ahead and fill and a new icon will appear in which his fourth ability final verse can activate. In this example, with two light verses recipied within, casting his fourth will cast Triumph. This is a much bigger cast of overguard protection, but now also providing overguard on kills and assists to himself and allies. For an overall look at his second ability, it's to be seen more of a protection service. So treat it as such and stay alive. Dante's third ability is Dark Verse. Now, unlike the Light Verse, the Dark Verse is centered around being offensive and dealing damage. By tapping this ability, Dante completes one entry of a Dark Verse into his book. During this cast, any enemy standing in front of Dante will be inflicted with slash damage within a 50 degree angle. If Dante follows this dark first cast a second time, the book will fill and a new recipe is ready to be cast. Using his fourth ability final verse, Dante now casts Tragedy. Any remaining damage over time on an enemy is converted into a single blast-like nuke, if you will. This also comes with a damage multiplier, and it can be seen as a similar ability to the Helm of Infusion Expedite Suffering. So if you can understand that, then you'll have a better idea of this and how it functions. But basically, it's a dot conversion nuke. Speed up your dot kills. Now guys, as mentioned earlier, you can mix between the light verses and the dark verses. So, so far we've covered the combination of two plus two and three plus three. So let's go and cover the last two combinations. Now then, with one light verse and one dark verse combination entered into the book, Dante casts Word Warden. A copy of his book, Noctua, will surround himself and allies within range. This synchronizes its attacks at the same time you or your ally is attacking. 
So as you can see here, if I shoot with my Noctua ability, the Noctua copy surrounding me will also attack at the same time that I am. This is a 30% damage instance increase, which is increased scaling off your equipped weapon damage, not of any Warframe ability stats like strength. So then finally, if you reverse it and have one dark first and then one light first combined into the book, Dante will now go ahead and cast Page Flight. This conjures three Paragrim Owls that will seek out and attack enemies, swooping at them, dealing slash damage, but also making that enemy susceptible to status of vulnerability. This is basically like added status chance, but instead of that increase on you, it's a decrease on the enemy. So it's the same effect, but it's inversed. Alrighty then, Clark, I think that I've got all of those, but you got some builds from me? Yes, of course I do. Let's go ahead and do three for this video. All of them are built around Steel Path, and it's hard to go wrong with Dante. So let's go and start with a generic build involving no subseams. Up on the screen is the first build that I worked with him. This allows you to truly play Dante and rotate between his abilities, giving you a much better feel of what you like and dislike within his kit. Dante absolutely loves strength. Not only is it great for offense, giving bigger damage output, but it's also great for his defense, allowing bigger overguard returns and caps. His innate abilities in terms of quality of life are genuinely well added. Whether it be a base of 20 or 30 meters in range or a great lasting duration of 30 or 45 seconds respectively, he doesn't scream urgent attention to fix any quality of life he has, which is absolutely fantastic for us. Dante comes innately with an aura former already implanted within him, which is fantastic. Since we already have overguard rotations and focus, we won't really need to go and put mods in like Prime Sure Footed for the quality of life of not being knocked down or even like Rolling Guard or Adaptation into this kit for survival ability. Again, this will go and give other mods a time to shine. And when I tell you, with this build here, I had little to no issue in any direction. The damage output is crazy strong, the survival within Steel Path trivializes what you're fighting against, and the quality of life, well, again, guys, is great. The only thing that I would go and say is the need for car speed is ideal. Whether it be a natural talent mod or some amber shards for car speed, either of those passive options will synergize great with Dante. Alrighty, let's go and have a little look at a run and gun knock to us setup. Now this absolutely slaps and that's no understatement. Dante's exalted weapon is extremely strong. So all we need to go and do is add to that further. So once again, strength to go ahead and bump up and scale weapon damage as a great first start. From there, adding in a subsumable ability such as Rhino's Roar, Mirage's Eclipse, Grendel's Nourish, or even Zaku's Zata Whisper as examples will all add to this build further. Now in mine, I'm currently using Nourish as he will be spamming his shots. So any energy return is always appreciated, but it also adds a little viral to the build and he synergizes great with that status chance and status vulnerability. Not even to mention that there's a lot of slash coming from the weapon as well. Now for this particular build, I would actually subsume off his third ability, Dark First, as it only provides offensiveness in a way that we don't really require it. Keep it a second ability for Overguard and his fourth to provide Overguard per kill and assist is something that will assist us further within this build. So his third is basically the candidate to go ahead and remove. Now after all of that is said and done, I do like adding a little more duration to follow up with, as the subsumable abilities will also scale off duration anyways. Ramping that up will always give you more time to focus on movement and shooting rather than ability rotations. So it's nice to go ahead and push that second after you've done your strength focus. The gameplay to this build is pretty straightforward. It's a generic run and gun style setup. Having mods like preparation will allow you to just get straight into the fight, not requiring much setup but then add in any damage mods, arcanes, or companions that can assist you and buff you further is always a nice mix to go ahead and add in. As for my Noctua builds, it looks a little something like this. Raw damage, multi-shot criticals, combination for corrosive, and then I topped it off with a little bit of heat as well. Now, I cannot stress enough to you just how much flexibility there is to play with here. So please don't follow that you're locked into a particular build like this. No, by all means, if you do need fire rate, like as a quality of life, then just go and chuck it into your build. And furthermore, I won't go super in depth here. But if you guys are already aware of the secondary outburst arcane setup with this ceramic dagger incarnate combination, it also works here just like it works on Mesa. Now, whether or not this does get changed is the reason why I won't go super in depth on it. But if you guys want me to explain it further on a future video, please go and share your interest. And then finally, we got a third build, a no brainer slash build. Now, it was also no surprise that we saw slash infused in Dante, and a few helmet abilities were naturally going to synergize. One of those was 
Rhino's Roar, inflicting a slash proc to only have the damage scaled further, but then double dipped, dealing twice the damage, is pretty much the no-brainer I was talking about. I would sub soon Roar over his first ability, as we're not really looking to run and gun within this build. Actually, it's quite the opposite. This build is wanting to spam his third ability, Dark Verse, as often as possible and watch everything tick around you and die around you with little to no effort involved. As you can go and see, strength is a main go-to factor here, bigger dots, bigger bleeds, lovely jubbly, but range is either going to match strength or you want to go and push it over strength. Being able to afflict enemies from a much greater distance is always a great quality of life. Pick and choose whichever one you go and prefer, but do go and keep in mind that range is fantastic here. Now, as for the gameplay, it's a bit one-dimensional. It's damn strong, and I do like it. It's just similar to that Citrine build where you're spamming Fractured Lash and watching everything die. The novelty wears off after some time, but it's still a great build to keep within your arsenal regardless due to how strong it is with ad clearing. And by all means, you can go and use this final first within this build, as you'll be spamming your dark verses quite often. So if you prefer to go and chunk down a bigger, tankier unit quicker, then that conversion nuke can definitely help in some cases. Arcanes. So normally in a video like this, I'll showcase one build, but I don't really want to make this video super long, so I'm just going to go and throw up on the screen some of the arcanes that I would recommend that they would fit and synergize well with Dante. It just depends on what purpose you're looking for from them. Either way, strength is a great scaler, and weapon arcanes or quality of life arcanes are always appreciated and work well with any of the three builds shown. Archon Shards. I did go ahead and briefly mention that I feel two out of the five slots are most unlikely going to be focused on that cast speed, as his kit is really rotation heavy. So two Amber Shards, either normal or Talforged, will make such a nice difference and you will absolutely feel it too. It's night and day, guys. Trust me here. However, as for the remaining three slots, this is up to you. But it should be no surprise that Crimsons are offering two great increases, strength and duration. Both of those are great enhancements to an already strong Warframe and an already strong builds. However, for the running gun build in specific, I'd also mention using two Emerald Shards for the corrosive proc increase to armor strip, which is fantastic within itself. Honestly, though, it's not really needed at base steel path levels. You'll be too strong and they won't really be used well enough. If you are looking to do some long endurance runs, however, they would definitely excel more there and you would feel the difference with the Emerald Shards implemented. Another recommendation is the Topaz Archon Shards. They can also be used for the secondary critical chance increase. It's nice to see some pretty colored numbers, but I would rather use my Crimsons personally. Take whichever one you guys think fits you and your style. Alrighty, some ability rotations. So I'm going to go and keep this relatively simple as we've already covered a lot and I don't want to be repetitive. So Dante's first ability should be self-explanatory. Guys, it's a really strong exalted weapon to use if you're wanting to use it. So whip it out whenever you want and blast away. Dante's second ability is your protection, and as soon as you can, cast that Overguard protection up for yourself and your allies, and that will most unlikely be your first ability cycle as you enter a mission and as you continue playing throughout, so get working on that. Dante's third ability is a mixture mostly. See, I like to see it more of a summoning ability personally, but it depends on the build. You can see, the copied book Noctua added to your weapon attacks is nice extra damage, and the Paragrim Owls can also do their own thing in the background, debuffing and damaging enemies. So these are good to cycle in as like a summoning-like buff. Otherwise, if you're wanting to go for that cast slash a nuke-like true mage, then tapping Dark Verses and nuking with Tragedy is the right there as your damage options. And then finally, like we covered earlier, Dante's fourth ability is a suffix action tool. It's an enhancer, a conjurer, fill the true power of Dante with this ability intact. That was a lot to cover, and I've realized it's only been a short amount of time since Dante has been released, but either way, this is without a doubt, in my opinion, one of the best Warframe releases. He is extremely strong, he has great quality of life, and he provides a great support to the team in terms of survival, so overall, he's a fantastic asset. Believe me, I find it quite hard to argue against those facts, so I'm really happy to go and see his success as of right now. Fingers crossed there aren't any nerfs or tunes down towards his kit. If you have already managed to go and get your hands on him, how have you guys been finding Dante? Are you enjoying him? And for those of you who might dread the grind, I want to go and make it clear that he's actually quite easy and healthy to farm for. Now, he's kind of similar to the Gaff in a way, so it won't be a massive tiring grind to get him. He's going to truly be a powerhouse for quite some time. So if you haven't got him yet, please go ahead and go out there and farm him. 
Karate Odin, guys, thank you for watching today's video. For any reminder to leave a like if you did enjoy it and share the video with a friend if you think they would also benefit from a guide like this and some builds. If you are new to the channel, come subscribe. But as always, I'll be catching you guys again in the next video.